This program contains dramatizations of real life events and contains material that may be disturbing to some audience members. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Today on It Takes a Killer, the cold-blooded execution of a prominent doctor's wife rips apart two families and sends shockwaves through New England. Police quickly track down her killer, only to discover the skeletons in his closet are far more twisted than anyone ever could have imagined. Wenham, Massachusetts, Friday, July 14th, 2000, 6 p.m. 44-year-old Karen Sharp gets ready for a rare night out on the town. She leaves her two youngest kids, 7-year-old Michael and 4-year-old Alexandra, home with a babysitter, then goes with her brother Jamie and his girlfriend for dinner with friends at the Gull and a moonlight cruise around Gloucester Harbor. Karen had been separated for a few months, and she was enjoying her newfound freedom from her husband. 11.40 p.m. The group is back at Karen's house. She talks to the babysitter in the foyer while her brother and his girlfriend check on the kids who are asleep in the TV room. A man arrives and parks his car in the driveway, turning the lights and the engine off. The man retrieves a rifle from the back seat, then walks slowly to the front door. It isn't locked. The man opens the front door and he sees Karen standing there. The intruder opens the door wider, revealing a cocked rifle in his hand. Karen screams, oh my God, then turns to run. With Karen's brother and the babysitter looking on, the man raises the rifle and fires one single shot. The bullet hits Karen in the back. She falls to the ground. The shooter calmly walks down the driveway and gets back into his car. He takes off into parts unknown. Meanwhile, Jamie rushes to his sister. The children are awakened by the lone gunshot. It's a very, very tragic scene now experienced by a number of people. The brother calls 911. I have an emergency. There's been a shooting at 19 Wall Street. Let's get somebody over here now. There's somebody here that might be dying in my arms. Karen? Karen. Is your sister still breathing? Where was she shot? I don't know where she shot. I'm holding her. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to hide from bullets. I don't know where she shot. Police are dispatched to the residence at 11.45 p.m. Jamie does what he can to save Karen's life. We need the ambulance for my sister now. Where is the person that has the gun? We don't know. We're held up in the house. We need emergency people here, and we need police officers, the best you have. A state police, whatever you need to do, get up here now. With the brother on the line with the 911 dispatcher, he's asked the logical question. Do you know who shot your sister? He didn't hesitate with his response. The shooter is a Richard Sharp. Dr. Richard Sharp is the shooter. Paramedics arrive on the scene and they rush her to hospital. At nearby Beverly Hospital, trauma surgeons try to save Karen's life, but she doesn't make it. Wenham police haven't had a murder investigation for 20 years. Now they have to find the person responsible. Cops descend upon Sharp's residence, which is 10 miles away in Gloucester. He's nowhere to be found. They immediately issue an APB for Dr. Sharp and his 2000 Toyota 4Runner, classifying the soft-featured dermatologist as armed and dangerous. Within hours of the shooting, his picture is publicized within the media and to all law enforcement agencies in a multi-state area. Word of Karen's murder ricochets through Massachusetts. Dr. Richard Sharp was the American success story. He and his wife Karen and their three kids seemed to have it all. They were worth millions of dollars, and everything, by all appearances, seemed to be going smoothingly. However, there was a deep undercurrent within the family structure, there were problems, and ultimately it wound up with Mrs. Sharp being murdered. People can't believe the popular dermatologist and patriarch of a very well-respected family is now the suspect in a murder case. The question is, where is he? The Massachusetts State Police are called to help with the search for Richard Sharp and a multi-state manhunt begins. In the meantime, Wenham police begin to process the scene at Hull Lane. At the crime scene, police discover a fragment of a 22 caliber bullet that was used to kill Karen Sharp. They try to piece together exactly where Dr. Richard Sharp obtained the rifle that was used to kill his wife. Dr. Sharp's receptionist, Paula Hiltz, provides a big clue. On Saturday morning, just hours after the shooting, detectives interview Hiltz at her ex-boyfriend's house. Paula Hiltz was Dr. Sharp's new girlfriend. Since Hiltz has been living with Richard Sharp since April 2000, she walks detectives through a timeline of his whereabouts the previous night. The night of the murder, 
Richard had taken a cocktail of prescription drugs to alleviate his anxiety, depression and pain. 7 p.m. Paula meets Dr. Sharp at Halibut Point Restaurant in downtown Gloucester. Over the course of dinner, Richard continues to self-medicate by drinking quantities of alcohol and that mixed with the drugs has a significant impact on him. 9.15 p.m. Sharp pays the check, then takes Paula to nearby Blackburn Tavern for more drinks. They leave the bar around 10. On the way home from dinner, Richard insists on stopping at Paula's ex-boyfriend's house. A month earlier in June, Sharp tried to buy a rifle from Paula's ex, but was rebuffed. This was a man who had a large collection of firearms, rifles, you name it. Before that evening was over, Dr. Sharp had stolen a 30 caliber Weatherby rifle from this ex-boyfriend's house. Could a 22 caliber round have been fired from that weapon, which is possible? Or did Dr. Sharp attain his own 22 caliber rifle and use that in the crime? Police search Dr. Richard Sharp's office as well as his home and they even retrace his footsteps on the night of the murder, but they find no murder weapon. Despite the fact that the police release photos of Dr. Richard Sharp, 24 hours later, there's still no sign of him. Tuftonboro, New Hampshire, Saturday, July 15th, 2000, 8.15 p.m. Dr. Sharp pulls into the driveway of some rental cottages in 19 Mile Bay. He asks the owner's son, Chuck Delorio, and his wife if he can get a room for the night, but they turn him away, suggesting he check down the road. He drives a couple miles to the Pineview Lodge and checks in there around 8.30. Not being criminally sophisticated, Dr. Richard Sharp has registered under his real name. 11 p.m. Chuck Delorio is watching the late evening news. And he recognizes his face from what's been shown on TV. Delorio calls his mother for advice. At 11.14 p.m., she calls the Tuftonboro police who confirm with Pineview that Dr. Richard Sharp is there, checked into room 12. The New Hampshire State Police SWAT team shows up. And because they're pretty sure they have an armed and dangerous person, they throw in pepper spray to bring him out. Within seconds, Dr. Sharp walks out with his hands up. He's giving up. They arrest him and charge him for first degree murder. Sharp ends up at Wolfboro Police Station, where he's fingerprinted and locked in a cell awaiting extradition back to Massachusetts. In the meantime, local cops execute a search warrant on his motel room. Police discover that he bought a six-pack of beer and a rope. His goal was to get drunk and hang himself that evening. However, he got drunk, fell asleep. Essex County, Massachusetts, Tuesday, July 18th, 2000. Dr. Sharp is arraigned at Ipswich District Court. He pleads not guilty to the first-degree murder of his wife. The judge decided there would be no bail on this particular matter. Now Richard Sharp is behind bars awaiting his trial. He didn't handle jail very well, though. Sharp is taken to Essex House of Correction. By the following morning, he's in his cell, refusing to move from the fetal position. He's transferred to Bridgewater State Hospital because there are serious fears that he's at suicide risk. The scars of Richard Sharp's fragile psyche trace back to childhood wounds. Dr. Richard Sharp is born on August 23rd, 1954 in Connecticut. He's the third of four children. His father was a machinist who liked to gamble, he once beats Richard with a baseball bat, and on another occasion, he chases him out of the house with a gun. Apparently, Benjamin Sharp was physically abusive to everyone in the family, except Richard's younger sister, Lori. Around the age of 10, Richard starts hiding in the bathroom to escape his father's abuse. He went through the hamper and took out some clothing belonging to Lori, the one who the dad didn't seem to touch. In self-defense, Richard started putting on the clothes he starts to wonder whether wearing her clothes may stop him from being abused. At 14, the young Richard saves up his money to buy his first set of women's clothing. His teenage years are full of confusion about his sexual orientation and his sexual identity. In 1972, during the first week of his senior year at Shelton High School, 19-year-old Richard Sharp crosses paths with 17-year-old Karen Hatfield. Against her parents' wishes, Karen falls in love with Richard, despite the fact that he's arrogant and bad-mannered. During Karen's senior year in high school, she becomes pregnant. In 1973, their first child, Shannon Sharp, is born. A few months later, they get married. Despite being young parents, the Sharps continue their educations. Karen attends community college and studies nursing. She works two jobs to support the family, while her husband gets an engineering degree, then goes to medical school. 
The family moves to Boston in 1985 after Richard is accepted to the prestigious residency program at Harvard. After completing his residency, Dr. Richard Sharp, now a dermatologist, begins teaching at the medical school as well as starting two very successful companies involving laser hair removal. Both earned him and his family lots of money over the next few years. The question remains, how did the Sharps go from millions to murder? Coming up, inside the Sharps' twisted and traumatic marriage, will cops find a motive for murder? By July 19, 2000, five days after Richard Sharp shoots and kills his estranged wife Karen at the dream home they built in Wenham, Massachusetts, the press starts to get wind that the millionaire doctor has some unusual secrets in his past. Since his earliest days, 